Okay, let's try and get those. Grenade rounds, I think it's grenade rounds. I need to drop off that as well, don't I? Whoops. So I don't think this is a random pickup, I think it it's always grenade rounds, but I could be wrong. So when I had to replay this section, it was crows instead of zombies. So just in case this is a surprise, or well, this seems confusing. That's why there are crows here now. Oh wow, three boxes. Nice. So I think that's everything in this part of town now. Yeah, we got the ammo from there, didn't we? Or did we? Yeah, we did, didn't we? How do we change maps? There we go. Yeah, I'm thinking of the downtown car, aren't I? Yeah, there's a car there, isn't there, that somebody burst out of. We rushed past them. Okay. Yeah, we're doing well. Almost at the halfway point with the game. We usually say the tram is pretty much halfway through the game. Nope. I was just about to ask, is this when the uh, scene happens with the floor collapsing? This is quite a weird one because it's like there's no consequence to it. Like if you pick to pull yourself up, you just you just climb up and that's it. Or if you jump down, all that happens is like this. You end up in a tunnel. You get to see a another grave digger from the looks of it dead. Okay, you do get attacked by these guys. Uh, then you just climb up and that's it. But like, there's no... 
hostile benefit to either, really. I think we're back out here. And then we just go through here and we can continue on. So like, what's the point? Actually, weirdly easy to avoid most of these guys. I say after being bitten, but like if you're not trying to get in the car, you can just weave through them, which I think is interesting. I mean, it seems like a deliberate choice on the part of the designers. You know, it's interesting that it is so easy. Well, like it doesn't look as though it's easy to avoid them, but it usually is. Yeah, I don't think we need these, but we'll pick them up just in case. So I think Nemesis does appear up here. But you can just run past him. He also doesn't drop anything here, I don't think. It's very weird how Nemesis works, because, like... Jesus, that was close. Because, like, he seems to, like, stalk you in so many areas, but then... Yeah, I think he can follow us in here. Oh. Oops. So yeah, there's like so many areas where he will stalk you. Um, and if you kill him, he'll drop items. And then there's also the scenes where you have to fight him, where he'll drop items. So if you do enough of those, you can get him to drop some goodies. Or in some of them, you can just run away. Uh, but, but there are also scenes where he appears, like just after where he's been trying to stalk you, where he doesn't drop anything if you down him. Which seems a bit weird. Enter the Grave Digger. I love that she just stands next to the wall as it rumbles. It's like nothing nothing good can come from a giant rumbling wall, Jill. Oh. 
So the Grave Digger can do a fair bit of damage to you, but luckily we've been able to avoid it. I think escaping with at least one hit or two hits is usually pretty good in that encounter. I usually leave on caution. Which I think is okay, there's no issue with that. Luckily we uh, managed to dodge him completely this time, or it. Could be a shame. It looks like we're ready to go. Here, take this. Okay. Uh, Nikolai won't be joining us. I understand. I'll operate the cable car. Let's go. So I wonder why he's not a zombie. It's looking good. Oh, I wonder what that is. I do think it makes a lot more sense that in the remake they changed this to a, a subway rather than a tram. Especially because the tram acts like a train, basically. Mikhail. It looks like a train, doesn't it? A train carriage. Get out of the cable car now! Mikhail, wait, don't! Get out of here! I don't think he drops anything in this encounter if you kill him. Also, is it me or does Mikhail look a lot like Sean Bean in the FMV? Mikhail. Is that just me? Like, no, the brakes are He's out. got a different nose, but the rest of his face looks a lot like Sean Bean. It might just be the hair though. Uh which one? Okay, emergency break. I do love that there's the option to just jump out the window though and just leave Carlos to it. Like what a shitty thing to do. Unbelievably shitty on Jill's part, but you can do it. Mm. So which one of these you, you pick um, does actually affect a few things. For one, the starting point of your character. I better get inside, or at least, yeah, get inside and then come back out. So for one, the starting point of your character, you can either start there or you can start in the, uh, the bedroom on the other side of the church. Or clock tower. Once we get a map, I can show you. Actually, can you see it, see it on here? No? Okay. So yeah, essentially you can either start, this is basically the left side of the map, and you can also start on the right side of the map. That's a simplified explanation. Um, but that's one one part of it. There's also something to do with um, Nemesis's rocket launcher. So I don't know if it's this version or yeah, I think it's this version um, because of the choice we made. 
we can have a boss battle with Nemesis quite soon. And in that boss battle, um, Carlos will appear. And he will he will fight Nemesis for a short period and blow up his rocket launcher so he can't use it. If you pick the other option, um, Nem uh, Carlos won't appear to fight Nemesis. Uh, but he will, before you get to the fight, you'll see him and he'll give you some freeze rounds, which uh, I do have some use. Okay, there's Nemesis again. I might have enough already to do another Yeah, do another batch of Magnum rounds. Oops. That was not intentional. So essentially, as I say, there's a left and right hand side of the map. Um, it's only a small area, but both have save points. So what we'll probably do is we'll just explore the other side of the map and then go save in that save spot. Sixty-one magnum rounds is pretty good, though. Or sixty-seven if you include the, the six already in the chamber. If we get even more gunpowder, then we could be laughing all the way to the bank, aren't we? Good golly, Miss Molly. Oh golly, what is going on here? Carlos, I don't believe it. You're alive. I'm not sure how we're gonna get out of this town. What are you talking about? We made it! You don't get it. They have no intention of letting us make it back alive. Do you really think we can trust their great evacuation plan? Huh, it's just a piece of paper. We don't have any other choice than to trust them right now. No. If we're gonna die, then we should get to choose when it happens. Ugh. So that's it then, huh? You're giving up? No. I just... I can't handle it. Okay. Well, you just run into that room full of zombies then. That's right. A really good idea. I have to say, I've never really understood that mentality where, like, you know, there's a good chance you're gonna die, so you you want to like kill yourself or choose how you die, so you can have so you can have control over how you go. It's just like surely it's better to to keep trying and keep making the effort to escape. Rather than just like presume you're gonna die and give in.
along the civilians. So that's what we're doing in this part of the game, essentially just ringing the, the bell. Yeah, that's the left hand side. That's the left hand side entrance. As you see on the right, see where the tram is? The room next to that is where you start if you jump out the window. So, really, it's not that much difference. And the save room is the save room, the first save room encounter, and the one we use. So, it doesn't make that much difference, but you know, it's slightly different. I do find it interesting that. At least the way it's written in this game, it seems like there were only, or well, the way it's presented in this game is, it seems like there were only like 30, or like a platoon of UBCS deployed to the city, like 30 guys, which seems ridiculous. <laughs> but then maybe it's just the way it's being written, or maybe it's not been translated right. Is he dead? Okay. So I find the oh god, he's alive, isn't he? Oops. I was just gonna say, like I find the the mine thrower or mine layer or whatever it's called, like interesting in theory, but then in practice, like it's such a forgettable weapon, and like it's such a wasteful weapon as well. Because like, if you fire around and it doesn't hit an enemy, it'll just stay in the wall and then it'll explode after a while, or it will disappear if you leave the the area, like. You've, you uh, open the door to go to the next area. You can't like retrieve them or anything, which is dumb. And there's not that much ammo for it to begin with, so. And to be honest, I found when using it, like it's okay on zombies, it's fine on zombies. But if you try and use it on like hunters, you'll shoot mines at them then they rush towards you and then the mine explodes like when the enemy is right next to you so it's like more dangerous to you than it is to them most of the time Right, we'll just clear out this room. Then come back and save. Okay, nothing in there. This is a pretty cool scene to be fair. Like loads and loads of zombies appearing from nowhere. Oh. Damn it, I need that key. Oh, 
don't think there's anything else in that room. Can we combine those? No? Okay. Guess we're doing something else with those. 